so much to get to this moment and have this opportunity uh, to come to college and um, use your GI benefits and um, we are so glad you're here. And on behalf of my colleagues, um, please accept our warmest welcome. All new students, if you could just please rise so we can welcome you with a round of applause. You're gonna look great in blue and gold. So a special shout out to my admissions um, colleagues. Are some of you here? Um, they, I know they've worked really hard um, and had a lot of conversations with you and helped you get off to a, a great start. And it would not be possible to have this event without the help of Morgan Williams, Jess Wisniewski, Kim David Chung, Jane Kelly, Wolf Clark, Andrew Stouffer, Mike Smith, Peter Wilkins, Mackenzie Luke, and Kate Delangowski. And if you're all here, if you could stand and we will give you a warm round of applause. <laughs> Sandra in the back. I also want to thank our current student veterans who are serving as panelists and tour guides and to our partners from Pannonian Associates, Jess and Marvin. I didn't see them come in yet, but if they're here, not yet, but you'll get to meet them soon. And all of my colleagues from the Veterans Task Force, Advising Council, and the Veteran Colleague Resource Group, thank you for all the marvelous swag. If you're in the building or in the room, oh, there's our admissions folks. Please stand if you, if you are here from the task force and the other support infrastructures for our veterans and military dependents. So we are your go-to crew. And if you have questions, we're the folks that you should come to and ask. And if we can't answer the question, we'll find a fellow dragon who can. So finally, we have a number of community guests who have tabled out um, in the lobby. Um, they've brought incredible information for you, and they are our valued partners. You're going to find that this city um, is very military friendly, and we always encourage you to network with the folks like Greater Philadelphia Veterans Network. Um, the VA Medical Center could not be here, but Stephanie Long is one of our uh, most trusted colleagues and um, always very resourceful. Um, if you have any questions, come and see me and I'll get you connected to her. Um, Peter Frudenberger from the Cohen Military Family Clinic, Jenna D'Amico from New Beginnings, uh, the Department of Athletics, James Rogers, who's also a veteran and um, runs our climbing wall and experiential learning. And he's got a great white, rudder, white, white water rafting trip coming up. Um, which I hope you'll take advantage of. And um, if all of those folks could just stand and wave so that you know who they are. Okay, cool. So um, Drexel University is amongst the nation's finest military friendly institutions and we've created an infrastructure of support to serve our military connected students and have a long and honorable history of hosting Army ROTC on campus. And I'm not sure if you knew that, but ROTC was required up until about 1969. Um, so we have a lot of alumni who have served, which is great because they are so excited and proud to welcome um, or to be part of opportunities to talk to our um, newest veterans. So stay tuned because there'll be events like during um, alumni weekend that you can come and meet some of our alumni veterans. So in a bit, you're gonna hear from some of my colleagues um, who will give you an overview of some of the services that will be very relevant to you and I hope you'll take advantage of these services. Um, these folks are amongst the greatest supporters of your success. Uh, I, I wanna thank them for being here and taking time. Um, there are so many things to look forward to in the months and years ahead. Um, I hope that you'll become involved and engaged and attend DVA meetings and final Fridays up at Drexel Pizza um, each month. Uh, to come to our career fair on October 11th and meet the military friendly employers at lunch and attend one of our upcoming veteran military family appreciation events in November. 
Today's your first event, and I hope it sets the tone for your Drexel experience. I also want to shout out to all of those people who are what I call webbing in. Um, there are probably about 45 folks that are joining us virtually today, so that's exciting. And we try to do that with a lot of our events, so stay tuned. If you can't be here physically, we'll send you the link. Um, we're here to serve you, and I genuinely mean that, and we know that this university will be a better place with you as a member. At this time, I'd like to introduce you to one of our university's greatest student advocates. Since Dr. Subir Sahu stepped foot on campus, he has been a champion for student success, high quality services, and he is not afraid to be a change agent or roll up his sleeves to pitch in. I am proud to be on the student life team because of his leadership and glad that Dr. Sahu could be with us today to say a few words. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Sahu. Good morning, everyone. It's really a privilege and an honor for me to be here with all of you here today and with our folks who are here online. Um, I'm thrilled and, and grateful that I had the opportunity to come just take a few minutes and say hello. Um, I do want to say one thing. Um, Dr. Widensall did a great job of recognizing all of the folks who are here to support you not only today but during your directional experience, but she left out one person and that was herself. Um, this is a population that is very near and dear to Dr. Widensall's heart. I know that personally. She is a wonderful student advocate and will do whatever she can to ensure that your experience is really positive. So let's give her a hand for all of her work. So I am entering into, and it's hard for me to believe this, my 13th year here at Drexel. Um, and I always love this time of year um, because we get to welcome new people into the Drexel family. Um, and one of the things that I love about our campus is unlike other institutions where there's more of a defined space for where campus begins and ends. You can, you know, when you go to Penn, you know when you're on Penn's campus and when you're off. That's not the case here at Drexel. I think we blend, we blend into the city and because of a variety of different reasons, the city becomes our campus. But it doesn't just stop there. Because of co-op, because of our partnerships through Drexel Online, the world is really our campus. And so I think unlike a lot of institutions, our, the, the personal individual stories of all of our students and really all of our community members make up our campus. Both physically and in what we represent, our family becomes more whole each year. And that's the biggest reason that I really love this time of year. For this population specifically, it is truly a privilege, and I know I speak on behalf of all of my colleagues at Drexel, for what you bring to our campus. Our story becomes that much more, much more full, becomes that much greater because of all the experiences that you bring to campus. And we are here to serve you. You're making us better, and we're gonna do everything in our power to ensure that your experience is cohesive, that it's strong, and that you really can get the most out of everything you do here on campus or at the institution. And so my hope for you today is that you start to build the foundation to really strengthen what your Drexel experience is. Make connections with one another, get to know your resources, get to know how you feel you're gonna be successful on campus and ask us questions. Come engage with us so that we can kind of fill the gaps as you go through the day. And hopefully this day is your springboard into your entire Drexel experience. So don't stop those conversations that you have today. Continue to engage with us, continue to talk to us, continue to come to us when you have questions or concerns, or if you see a gap in what we're doing and you think we can improve, let us know that. So I just wanted to say, on behalf of all of Student Life and all of the institution, thank you so much for coming to Drexel, for choosing to be with us. Thank you so much for what you're gonna bring to our campus. I look forward to getting to know you throughout the day, but really throughout your Drexel career. So welcome. Okay. I'm so excited for you to meet Tiffany and Bryant. If you guys could come on up, uh, fellow Dragons, and tell us about Drexel Central and certifying. Hello 
all, I would like to first start off by saying thank you for your service. Uh, as it says there, I'm Bryant Morris, and this is my handy sidekick, Tiffany McKinney. Um, throughout this process, Tiffany is going to be your point of contact. I'm always there for you if you need, um, but Tiffany is the main person. I have all confidence in her. So some of you guys have met Tiffany, but again, she's a good person. I'll give out contact information for herself and I at the end of this, but uh, I'm going to turn it over to Tiffany to go over some benefit information. What do you got? So as Brian said, um, me and Brian are both the certifying officials um, located in Drexel Central, which is over at the main building. Um, specific mission is to basically assist all of you with any veterans benefits, questions about benefits, financial aid, stuff like that. Um, once you know that you're attending, uh, that you're using benefits, make sure you contact me or Bryant. Make sure that we have your paperwork, everything on file so we can get you guys certified, get you paid for your terms. So like I said, we're located Drexel Central Main Building, which is right over at 3141 Chestnut. Um, and then here's our main contact information. You can always contact us directly or you can always just drop in Drexel Central. Either one of us is usually there. Does anyone need me to keep this up so you can write it down or anything? So basic services that we provide, pretty much VA benefits. We're the ones that are going to certify your benefits with the VA every term. Um, these benefits include, but they're not limited to, post 9-11 GI Bill, uh, post 9-11 with yellow ribbon, 1606 and 1607 for reserves and guard, um, vocational rehab, and then Chapter 35, survivors and dependents. Um, specifically, Chapter 33 in yellow ribbon. So our program is completely uncapped, which means that if any of you have the yellow ribbon, we automatically apply it to you when it takes effect. Um, and we cover it 100%. So between the school and the VA, we cover you over the tuition cap. So for this year, it's $23,671.94. Once you guys hit that, yellow ribbon's an automatic. You don't have to worry about signing up for it or anything like that. Um, couple things that we do with this, we don't certify you while you're in co-op. So if any of you guys are doing a co-op, just keep in mind as a courtesy to you, we're not going to certify you just because if you do that on your co-ops, you may not be able to make it through your program on your benefits. However, if you do want to be certified on co-op, we can do it. Um, there is a form that we ask you to fill out just so we have it in writing, and then we can certify you if you guys need it. Um, so in order to qualify for the housing allowance for the post 9-11, to receive the full housing allowance, you do have to be full-time. So full-time for undergrad students is 12 credits. Um, you will qualify for a prorated amount as long as you're uh, seven credits or more. So seven credits is the minimum you need to qualify for a portion of the VAH. Grad students, it's nine or more credits. You need a minimum of five to qualify for a portion of it. Uh, another thing we do, we pre-certify you when registration opens. So that's typically about six weeks before the start of classes. I'm going to go in, pull the registrations, I'll start certifying you off of that. Keep in mind that if you're not registered for your full amount of credits, maybe three credits here or there, I'm going to certify you at that and then I go back in the week after add drop and then I'll make your final schedule update. So you will get your corrected amount and everything like that. So if the VA owes any money, if you owe back pay, something like that, that'll be adjusted after classes, uh, the add drop period. And then keep in mind too, if you withdraw from any courses or if you drop any courses outside of the first week of classes, make sure you first check in with your advisors and then you also check in with us at Drexel Central because you could owe money back to the VA. They prorate the amount sometimes, so if you drop below 12 credits, you may owe back a portion of that. So just make sure you always check in with one of the certifying officials. Um, and then a couple updates for those using the GI Bill. Uh, most of you are probably aware that the GI Bill is now changed to the Forever GI Bill, the Harry W. Comery Act. So there's a couple things that are going to be rolling out starting this past August all the way up through 2022. So if you have any questions about that, you can always go back to the VA's website or you can check in with us at Drexel Central. Um, if you think you might fall into one of those updates, just let us know. We can give you some more information about it. Uh, one of the biggest updates that may affect some of you is to STEM programs. So um, there's a bunch of different programs that fall within that. So you can always check back to the website. But what it is going to allow you to do is it may allow you to extend your benefits for nine additional months if you fall within the STEM programs. So if you have questions about that, again, check with the VA website or you can check in with us. Thank you. 
do a great job. And seriously, and, and Tiffany knows what this is like and how complicated it is because she herself have, has gone through the process um, as a veteran as well. So it's my pleasure now to introduce my colleague from the Center for Learning and Academic Success Services, Rebecca Signor. Good morning. <clears throat> I am Rebecca Signor. I'm one of the directors of the Center for Learning and Academic Success Services. We have a lengthy title, very easy to remember acronym. It's CLASS. You'll hear us talk about CLASS a lot. Um, so please feel free to just shorten our name. Love it acronym. Um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about academic support here at Drexel University, which is available through our office in class, but also through several other um, locations and services. So I'm going to start with class. CLASS is a learning center. It provides support to students through a couple of different services, the first of which, which is broadly applicable, available to all students, undergraduate, graduate, full-time, part-time, distance, face-to-face, -face, it matters not. Um, we do provide academic coaching. So what academic coaching is, is we work with students one-on-one -on -one in their academic skills. So if you're returning or you've been out of a classroom for a little while and you want to talk to someone about your study skills, your organization, your test taking skills, your time management, keeping yourself motivated, note taking, reading strategies, and so on and so forth, we are available to help you with that. That's what an academic coach does. They are trained to work with you on your learning strategies, skills, and behaviors. It's very personal. So you come in, you sort of direct the session. You tell us what it is you want to work on. We typically start with one or two topics, and they all sort of come together. Um, so it really is very much directed based on what you would like to work on. Sometimes you will be referred to see us from, for example, your academic advisor, Dr. Widensall. They may say, hey, check out this service. Um, we're really here to help you get started on the, on the right foot. Um, or if you're going through and you realize, hey, I want to sort of bump up my skills, you can visit us at any point in the term. Um, we do have several locations, so if you are on this campus primarily, we are located in the Crease Student Center in the basement, the garden level, being fancy, but it's the basement, um, room 050, so you're welcome to make use of that space. We do have a couple of computers down there, um, and there are tables where you can sit and work. Um, it is not a quiet space, per se, but it is a space that it, there's a lot of work going on. There's big whiteboards, so please make use of that if you feel like that is something that um, you're looking for sort of a space to make your own. Um, if you are a center city student, meaning typically if you're in the College of Nursing and Health profession or the Graduate School of Biomedical Sciences and Professional Studies, you'll find yourself on that campus. We have a large center um, in the new college building on the first floor. Again, we have printing and we have anatomical models. If you're in anatomy, that's important. Uh, we have space where you can work, where you might meet with your coach, or where you uh, might meet with a tutor, which is another service that we provide. So we provide some tutoring, um, primarily for the College of Nursing and Health Professions and for the um, School of Public Health and the Graduate School of Biomedical Sciences. So we're sort of your health science tutors. Um, we are not, by any stretch of the imagination, the only tutors available on campus. Um, so I'll tell you a little bit about that in a moment. One of the other services that we do is workshops. Those are available for, again, all students. The workshops are offered three different workshops in a term, the first one being time management. It's a very popular topic here at Drexel. Um, so we offer those once in University City, once in Center City, and once online. So if you are, um, you know, at 9 o'clock on a Monday night, you're at home, that's when we run our workshops via Blackboard Collaborate, you may just want to pop in and, and do some work on time management. And that's another way that you can get the information very similar to academic coaching, but you can bring a group of friends to one of these, or you can do it from the comfort of your own home. In terms of other support services that are available, I had mentioned we do some limited tutoring, but there is a lot available to support students. So we have something called the Learning Alliance, and that website down there at the bottom, which is drexel.edu slash learning alliance, will take you to a, a web page that gives you an, over, an idea of the overview of the services that are available. There is not one location on this campus where everybody is centrally located for academic support. We are sprinkled about in different buildings. So, um, if you go to this website, you can click on the names of any of these locations, find out where the tutors or the support is available, what, can, what um, building, their hours, do you need an appointment, can you walk in, it's all sort of located there for you. I always like to highlight a couple of resources, the Drexel Writing Center, every student will write a paper, at least one, 
oftentimes much more than that. Um, so you're gonna wanna get familiar with the Drexel Writing Center. It's physically located in the basement of McAllister Hall, um, but they also have a lot of information on their website. The Math Resource Center, again, typically most students are taking several math classes. If you feel like you're going to want a math tutor or support with math, the Math Resource Center is a location and a service that you're going to want to get very, very familiar with. Um, if you're coming in, for example, for engineering, there's the Academic Center for Engineers. If you're coming in for computer science, there's the Cyber Learning Center. As you can see, there's a whole host of places. So again, visit that website, click through, see what's available in terms of the tutoring support, because it is here, and we have tried to kind of make it virtually centrally located so that you can navigate it easily. And that's it for me. So thank you and welcome to Drexel. Thank you, Rebecca. And now I'd like to ask Vanessa Cohen to join us. And Vanessa is joining us from Disability Resources. Good morning, everyone. My name is Vanessa Cohen. I am one of two accommodation coordinators in Disability Resources. I'm thrilled to be here, and I'm excited to share a little bit more about the services we offer to students. Okay. In terms of Disability Resources, we are housed within the Office of Equality and Diversity. We're located between 32nd and 33rd on Arch Street in the James E. Marks Intercultural Center. Um, we work with students at the undergraduate level, including grad students, as well as those in our medical school and law school. Um, we work with students from all across um, the colleges on campus, all the different majors that we have available. In terms of supporting students with disabilities, we primarily work with students who have a diagnosis um, lasting six months or longer. That may include a chronic health or medical condition, a psychiatric impairment, learning disabilities, attention deficits, um, that's not limited to that list alone. We also work with students who may have come in, uh, may be currently working with the VA in particular in terms of assessment and diagnosis. Um, we do work with those students as they're undergoing perhaps an evaluation or reevaluation, um, undergoing treatment, and so we'll work with students to provide accommodations. Accommodations may include those in the classroom uh, such as uh, note-taking assistance, assistance with extended time, distraction-reduced testing. Uh, we really look at each student individually. Um, with that being said, we do require that students complete a request form for accommodations. Uh, we just ask for a little bit uh, more in terms of your background, um, the accommodations that you're requesting, and how your disability impacts you. We also ask for specific documentation, so that may be from the VA, that may be from another medical provider or private practitioner. We have specific guidelines, guidelines depending on your condition. Uh, those can be accessed directly on our website. Uh, we also have applications and more information in person in our office. We have daily walk-in hours from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m., as well as 1 to 2 p.m. So if you ever have any questions or you're uncertain if accommodations um, something that would apply to you, we're always more than happy to speak with students one-on-one -on -one and answer any questions that you may have. Um, additional accommodations uh, may include dining-related needs, uh, campus accessibility for mobility concerns, um, and housing accommodation requests as well. Um, if there's something that you don't see on our list or on our website, we're always more than, ha uh, more than happy, like I said, to discuss any questions you have um, and see how we can best accommodate you. Um, our office is held to strict confidentiality guidelines, so please note, registering with our office does not mean that um, there would be any, any record notified, for instance, on your transcript. We don't disclose anything regarding your specific diagnosis or condition to professors. Anything confidential and on your documentation stays within our office, but we really want to work with you to best support you both in and out of the classroom. Um, so like I said, if you have any questions specifically or you're unsure what to submit, please reach out to our office. Uh, we have a wonderful team over in OED. Um, like I said, there's another accommodation coordinator, Heidi Elnathan. Her and I work closely with students one-on-one. -on -one. Um, we would schedule an appointment with you uh, based on your availability. Uh, we know we have some students as well who are online learners. We also work with those students in terms of accommodations. We're available for phone appointments or in-person appointments, whichever works best for you. Um, so please reach out with any questions and we're, um, we look forward to hopefully meeting you all and continuing to work with you here at Drexel. Thank you.
So um, next we have Elise Fair from the library. I don't see Elise, is she here? Her colleagues, maybe not. Okay, so I just want to make um, some brief remarks on her behalf. Um, and actually, uh, during the tour today, you will stop by the library. Um, there are a few different places, as you can see, locations for the Drexel libraries. And um, they also have a, um, a virtual space as well. I think the best thing about the Drexel library are the individual uh, librarians. So depending on what your college is, you will have a go-to librarian to assist you with research. And so they have a fantastic um, website, and I would encourage you all to use that and find out who your librarian is. So um, I believe Elise will be at the library during the tour when you guys stop by. Okay. All right, next I'd like to welcome Greg Law from the Steinbright Career Development Center. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for coming. Um, thank you to all of our veterans, um, spouses, friends, families, support systems. Um, I've only been with the university for a little over a year. I'm not a veteran, um, but I've been with the task force just about since I started, and it's really a humbling experience, and it's been wonderful. So thank you for all your support and to everybody for coming. Um, so my part is to talk about Steinberg Career Devel Development Center. Uh, I'm assistant director for employer relations. So for the students, you probably won't see me or my team too often, but um, you'll meet your co-op advisor. There's also uh, a whole career services team with all kinds of counselors and help as well. So you'll probably see them more. But um, please add me on LinkedIn. Uh, I've been in, in recruiting and talent acquisition for a long time, so add me. Uh, you can have all my hiring managers as secondary connections, and you can scout them and hound them for jobs, and I'm happy to help out in any way possible, so please connect with me. Um, but before taking part in co-op, uh, undergraduate students participate in a course called Co-op 101 um, to help prepare you. And for our veterans, we do offer a, a course called Co-op Essentials. It's a five-week course instead of the 10-week course, um, we acknowledge and understand that a veteran making the transition to a private industry um, will benefit from different preparation strategies than a 17 to 19 year old transitioning from high school, right? Um, so we do offer this course. Um, we cover topics like creating a resume for a private industry, um, highlighting and helping to put on paper and market the skills and trades that were acquired during your military service, um, interviewing skills, things like professionalism and like norms in the in the workplace and kind of making that transition into that type of an environment. Um, job search techniques as well. Um, everything that can prepare you for your co-op. Um, and then of course you will go out on co-op. Uh, whether you're on a four cop plan and you'll have one co-op or a five cop plan and have three. Uh, of course that's Drexel's flagship program so you'll get the opportunity to gain real life work experience in your area of study and industry of interest. Um, we offer first year career counseling. We have an amazing career service um, professional who works with the freshman. Her name's Emily. Um, and she provides help and supports transitioning to campus life and this you know, new academic schedule that everybody's going to be on. Um, can help finding resources and methods of involvement and opportunities all across campus. Um, the educational counseling supports all the topics that are covered in Co-op 101 um, and, all, and then also provides one-on-one -on -one support with the students uh, with, with their co-op search, um, the application and interview process, if you need help while you're on co-op, uh, debriefing and kind of looking back on your co-op experience and how you can use it for your next co-op or for your next set of classes. Um, we provide counseling for all that. And we hold three career fairs each year. Our fall career fair, which is on October 11th, you should definitely come. Um, a spring career fair, and then we have an engineering career fair too that we hold in late winter. Um, so of course, each provides everybody the opportunity to come and connect with local industry, hiring managers. Um, but we also really take part in trying to connect our veteran population with the job opportunities. Um, our veteran students, regional alumni can get pins, um, ways of identification, and then we do the same thing for the hiring managers too. 
um, so you guys can find each other and network and mingle. Um, we, we will hold a veteran lounge or a lunch during the career fair as well uh, for about an hour where we will invite uh, those particularly veteran friendly companies who have specific you know, initiatives and agendas to come and try to recruit veterans, um, the opportunity to, to meet them and network um, in a more of a soft approach type of an environment, um, food, drinks, things like that. Um, but I know it's, when you come to the fall career fair, it's actually attached. I mean, it's you'll see it, it's, it's off on the side, um, but it's in the building, you really can't miss it. So um, it's a really great opportunity to network with those who are trying to hire veterans. And um, something that I've, I've been doing and the Veterans Task Force is really looking to connect with more of those companies who have those affinity group connections and your veterans councils and specific veterans talent development and talent acquisition individuals, we're seeing that more and more. So we're trying to get them to come to the career fair and be available to our veteran student population. Um, we can also provide assistance with connecting with professional organizations and affiliations. Um, gosh, it's hard to list them all, but some are the Office of Veteran Student Services, the Greater Philadelphia Veterans Network, the Student Veterans of America, the Philadelphia Salute Coalition, of course, Drexel Veterans Association Facebook page, um, among others. So that's pretty much my slide. That's, that, that's our phone number at 215-895-2185. Uh, We're at 3201 Arch Street on the north side of campus out here. Um, like I said, connect with me on LinkedIn. Come on by and say hello and come visit us anytime. Thanks. Okay, so um, one of your greatest resources on campus is going to be your academic advisor. And today we have two of our academic advisors, uh, John Rands and Noel Palladino, and they're going to speak on behalf of their colleagues in advising. So please join me in welcoming them. Hey, welcome everyone. Um, my name is Noel Palladino. Hey, uh, John Rands. And we didn't practice this, so yeah. I don't know how this is going to go. So um, I'm from the College of Engineering. Do I have any engineers out here? Yes. Welcome. Uh, obviously, welcome to the rest of you as well, but you know, <laughs> just saying. All right. So I'm not going to read our mission to you. Our mission is that we're here to help you. We're here to support you in any way, shape, or form. And especially in the first term, what I would say is um, when you come in, um, you're often going to be referred to us for almost everything. Go ask your advisor. Go ask your advisor. Please do not hesitate to come and ask us for anything that even if it doesn't have to do with your academics. Um, that's like, I would say, our job mostly in the first term. I get like everything from housing to benefits to where's the best place to eat on campus, where do I go for a locker, like, you know, anything. And that's kind of what we're here for. Drexel's a big place. There's a lot of things that are here to support you, but, you know, you don't know where to go at first. So that's what we're here for. Um, that pretty much sums it up. I would say we are your go-tos. We are your POCs. Like, if you have any questions at all at any time, um, that's what we're here to do. We're, we know all the resources. Um, I did my undergrad here as well, so I, you know, <laughs> we have a lot. We have a big network of people as an advisor, so don't hesitate to exactly come and ask. And it's always better to do that sooner than later, because as you're going to find out, the core system, the terms go by very quickly. Um, you won't understand that until you actually <laughs> experience it yourself, but very quickly. So it's better that you come to us sooner than later because it could mean the difference of, you know, missing something important in terms of your grade and your GPA, um, something that could be preventable. So just, yeah, we're, we're here to ask. Okay, so but just so you know how John and I work together and like all of the advisors sit on certain committees together, we are all aware of what is out there and available for you for resources. So John and I will work with the military transition program, so if any students here that are in that program, we have a nice handoff system. I mean, it's always a, a nice back and forth. John is not like a face that sits in an office, you know, across campus. Obviously, we never see each other. We do see each other quite often. Um, so, you know, just we're all a connected, um, you know, system here, so I just want you to be aware of that. 
So some of the ways that um, you know we will help you as advisors, we're listing you know up on this slide. Um, and again, I just want to make sure that you know I say this one more time: please do not limit yourself in your first term to using your advisor only for academics. Um, that is just probably the most important point that I can make. I did this at a transfer student session earlier um, this week. We did it at a first year freshman session. You know, that is probably the most important point that we want to put across. But, you know, obviously we're your academic advisor, so we help you with your academics. You know, anything from, you know, the easy parts of registration, making a plan of study, especially for students that are using um, a GI Bill, you know, have maybe have a limited time. You know, we're going to help you make sure that you can use your and use and maximize your benefits. Okay. Um, support services, Rebecca, she, I don't know where she was here, um, for class, uh, any of the tutoring resources, you know, we want to refer those, um, refer you out to those right away if you're having an issue. We don't like to have students come in when it's kind of a little, a uh, little too late. Um, you know, we're waiting until the next term to get you back on track. We want you to be on track from the get-go, okay, so we really want to make that happen. Um, any kind of instructor concerns, we help you keep track of deadlines. Um, so all of those types of things, you know, we're here as advisors to help you with. Um, things that we're going to refer you out for, and there's all these people that are sitting that have already um, presented and that will present, but, you know, financial aid and uh, billing, Brian and Tiffany, I mean, they're amazing, so, you know, we're not going to pretend to be experts on those. Um, housing, dining, health insurance, immunization. Um, those are all types of things that we don't handle specifically, but we will know where to send you. So, again, if you're just confused. <laughs> you know, the first week is always like, I feel like there's a lot of like that deer in the headlight type of look going on with any student that's new to campus, you know, a larger campus, a lot of resources. Just make us your one-stop shop, you know, at first um, and feel comfortable doing that. Um, Chris, do you want to give me a shout out sitting in the front? Didn't we do that for you sitting in the front? No. Yes. <laughs> yes. See, you have a fellow student up here that was from in the College of Engineering that can tell you that. So, anything yeah. you want to add? Um, I guess some main points academically with registration, you have priority registration. It is amazing. <laughs> I had it here when I was a student um, through the Honors College. It means that first day you can register a little bit earlier than everyone else. Utilize that. It will be a huge tool in keeping you on track with your plan of study. Um, what the hell's? That was a big one. <laughs> but yeah, in terms of your benefits, be aware. You know, those are your benefits. You've earned them. Um, keep track of them. Check in with Tiffany, see how much time you have, look ahead, um, because exactly, it's your benefit. So if you plan ahead, you, have, you know, know your plan of study, you kind of want to have a big picture in addition to just knowing each term. You want to have like a big picture in terms of timeline. Um, there are multiple options if for some reason you need to finish sooner. There are options sometimes to do that, but you have to let that be known. Um, right, and just as, as it says at the bottom of the slide, if you don't know who your advisor it is, is, it is listed in Drexel 1. So when you go onto the welcome page, there is a list of people that are your, what we would call your support network, or I can't remember what we changed it to. But your advisor is, is listed out there. So make sure that you're paying attention to that. It links to your advisor, their email. You can make appointments directly with your advisor through there. There are open office hours on the side for you to just pop in without an appointment. So just make sure that you're aware um, that that listing is up there um, on Drexel 1 for you. Yeah, so your, your advisor's got your back, yes. <laughs> basically. Right. So welcome, guys. Hope you have a great rest of the day. Cheers. Thank you all so much for all you do for our students. And next, we have Dr. Annette Molyneux, Assistant Vice President for Student Life. She's going to talk to you a little bit about counseling and health services. Good morning, everyone. And welcome. Um, okay, a couple of things that I want to just share with you, some information I need to share with you. We do have a counseling center on campus which is staffed with uh, licensed psychologists. We function in the same way that an outpatient uh, psychological service would function in that we are absolutely confidential. Uh, we're well trained, well, well skilled. We have APA accreditation in terms of the uh, way that we operate. Um, and it's no charge. We have a part-time psychiatrist that we use for uh, to help stabilize folks if that's what's essential. We also have on staff an MSW, a case manager, who can assist anyone in finding resources off campus if that's what you prefer. Uh, or if you need resources for family members, our case manager can do that. I say this because 
sometimes I know there's some hesitancy across the board in seeking uh, psychological services, counseling services, but as, as, as John and Noel said, things happen very quickly here. So if you find yourself struggling and you're just getting anxious or whatever's going on and you just need some support, please contact us. Please contact us. We have lots of connections too, as I said, off campus so we can make a referral if that's more appropriate. Uh, we have two locations, uh, Center City office if you're down there, uh, we're in the Bellet Building. On this campus, we're in uh, Cree Student Center. Uh, what we do when, when, when individuals come in, we set up the person up with a triage to try to determine what is in that person's, what would meet that person's needs best. Sometimes it's a referral over, right over. One, one of the things we say is go see your advisor. Or maybe it's class for academic support, whatever the issue is. We'll make an internal <laughs> referral too if that's appropriate. Um, we refer off, off campus if that's what you're looking for and if that's appropriate. We run groups and we have a veterans group. Uh, we have a person on staff who has done, uh, who has worked in the VA, so he is, um, you'll meet him during the lunch hour, uh, Dr. Leon Gellert. Uh, and then we, we do individual therapy. So whatever you need, please, even if you're not sure, come and talk to us and if that's appropriate, that's what we'll do, we'll help you out. If not, we'll make sure that you get to the right place. Regarding the health insurance and immunization, the office is second floor of Crease. We, uh, uh, the immunization requirements are, uh, that's the, a requiring university requirement for all incoming students. Please make sure that you submit your, your completed immunization form. Sometimes we have, sometimes folks who are coming from the military, there's some issues with collecting all of that information and getting it into the office. We understand that. We, work with that before. If you have any problems at all, please come to the second floor of Crease in the Dean of Student Suite, 215. Talk to Rita Magaziner or one of, uh, or Shana, one of the staff that's there, uh, and they'll assist you in, in getting all that business taken care of, because I know sometimes that can get a little bit tricky. Um, regarding health insurance, just make sure that you wave out if you have coverage, which you probably do. Just please go online and just wave out so that you're not tacked with a, a bill for an insurance that you don't, uh, Aetna insurance is the one that we automatically default folks into who haven't um, waived out by September 30th. So please, 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 and that's an annual event. Okay, the immunization records go in once, uh, indicating that you're, you have appropriate insurance, whatever, you know, health care coverage, that's an annual occurrence. So please don't forget to do that. Um, that's it, just the two slides, right? Oh, the location. I told you that. And, uh, oh, there, that's the other one. Okay, yes. Like, as I said, um, University City, we're um, second floor of Crease, Suite 215. Center City location is the new college building on the first floor, Suite 1106. The Student Health Center, we have a health center on campus. It's across from Landmark on 34th and Market. Uh, they, they operate as a regular um, uh, doctor's office. I mean, they take insurance, they work with your insurance, and there are a whole range of doctors there providing different services. Uh, there's also a, fa a, a, a regular practice site right next door. I mean, it's, it's the Drexel University College of Medicine physicians who are our docs. Um, so we go there, I go there. I know Rebecca's gone there. So. Uh, Feel free, it's right there, it's easy access. Just wanted to make you aware of that because I know sometimes students aren't aware that we actually have a health center on campus, a regular doctor's office on campus. Um, as I said, 34th and Market, there's a big blue awning out front so it's easy to spot. Their hours are Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 8.30 to 5, and on Tuesday, Thursday, 10.30 to 7 to try to accommodate um, uh, co-op students. We also, if you're new to the area, there are several urgent care centers pretty close to campus, close enough. There's Jefferson has one on uh, Chestnut Street, 22nd and Chestnut, I think, and then there's a My Doc, uh, which is 35th and Market. So, um, and, and those operate, uh, you know, with regular um, Saturday, Sunday hours and, and evening hours, just in case you weren't aware. I think that's it. Thank you. Thank you and welcome. Annette's got a great team, so don't be afraid to, um, you know, 
check into these services that she talked about. So this is the best part now. We're going to transition to the voices of our current student veterans. I'm going to ask them to come on up and get the panel ready. Um, and if anyone needs to stretch, you know, move around, please feel free to do that while I just um, remind you that we have a number of of um, folks from our community that are here with us and they've got some tabling outside. I want to thank them again um, and I hope that you'll stop by and chat with them. Um, Jess Wisniewski is um, one of our unique dragons and she's going to be joining the panel in a minute. Um, she is a fellow colleague and uh, works in Drexel University online. Uh, she served in the United States Navy as a mechanical engineer and made a deployment in 2013. Jess, will you join me? Come on up. Um, when she left the military, uh, she hooked a left turn and decided to complete an undergraduate degree in social work. She's very humble. <laughs> and she currently works for Drexel University Online, as I said, as a military and veteran enrollment counselor and she recently became the Drexel Veteran Association advisor and works with the veteran and military campus community as an advocate for military connected students. She's also on our veteran colleague resource group. So this is another thing that I'm really proud about. Um, so many of my colleagues who are faculty and staff have served and they have created a community amongst themselves and they are also um, part of the collective uh, effort that we have on campus to really be supportive of military. So you can find great mentors in these faculty and staff who have served and Jess is their president as well. So Jess has been working with um, some of our current students to put together a panel, which I think is going to really be helpful to all of you. And I know you haven't had a chance to ask a lot of questions yet. So we, we've built that into this portion as well. So without further ado, I'd like to welcome all of our students. And I hope I have all of your names on this slide. If I don't, my apologies in advance. Um, loving you, I don't see you on that slide, but I am so happy to see you in person. So Jess, it's all yours. All right. Hello. All right. Hello. So I'm going to do two quick announcements for upcoming events for, um, for our student body. So our first uh, DVA student body meeting is September 28th. That's going to be uh, from 11 to 2 in the Vet Lounge, uh, which is in the Armory, and you will see that today on the tour. Our meetings are typically the last Friday of every month from 11 to 12, and then from 12 to 1 starting next month, we're going to be heading over to Drexel Pizza uh, for just some conversation and just to blow off some steam. Um, another upcoming event, Dr. Widensaw had mentioned it briefly in the beginning, um, right around the corner here, October 6th, James Rogers from the Rec Center is going to be traveling to the Lehigh Gorge for some whitewater rafting, uh, and he's leaving some room for our incoming and current veteran students. Uh, more information can be found in the lobby. There's some flyers floating around, or you can come to me. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Um, so before we jump into the panel, I would love for everyone just to introduce themselves, starting with Lovingly. Thank you. 
So we're going to jump in with some of our questions. Don't be afraid to pick up those mics that you have if you guys want to pass them around. So one of our, these are very commonly asked questions. Um, we're going to leave time afterwards. So if anyone has questions in the audience, feel free. Um, so our first question was, how was this school different from any other schools that you've attended? Coming here was just a lot different. You can just tell instantly, like the amount of funding the school has, the amount of resources they have to you, the, the, like the professors, their knowledge, just everything here was just so much like different and better that it really just like excelled me. It's like a whole nother level. I felt like when I was going to community college, it was like it was like big boy high school, mm -hmm. and coming here was like just a complete 180. For me, coming here, the difference was that they operate on quarters, and it was stating it was stated earlier that the time goes really fast, and today it will start a day, and the next day it feels like you're at the midterms. So trust and believe that these quarters go very quickly and utilize all the resources that are available to you in reference to tutoring and study groups. Get to know people in your courses and form study groups because these is sometimes in some classes it's only three tests and that's your grades versus being at some places like CCP you'll have homework that'll give you a grade you'll have quizzes that'll give you a grade but in some of these programs only your test gives you your grade so you need to ensure that you're always on top of your grades I went to Montgomery County Community College and I can tell you that for a university I thought oh my god it's going to be big they're going to pay attention to me since I got here as a veteran, I spoke with Brian Morris, I met Tiffany, Rebecca, you name it, Noel, shout out to Noel again. So you name it, it's it's more of a personal touch. I feel for a big school such as this, of the thousands of students here, coming from a community college with only maybe 2,000 students, they give you more of a personal touch and they do take care of the veterans as well, where you got Brian and Tiffany at your helm. So if you need anything, you go right to the front of the line. You don't have to wait at Drexel Center going, I have a question. You want to talk to someone in person, right? You want to do an email. Emails are boring and they, they're horrible. They suck. But when you come in person, Brian will take time and talk to you one-on-one. -on -one. He might not give you the answer you want to hear, but it's going to be the answer that's correct. So understand that too. That's all. I think that um, <clears throat> one of the primary differences between Drexel and some of the other universities, I started off at Mount St. Mary's, which is in uh, Emmitsburg, Maryland, uh, is, is a co-op opportunity. It's not just preparing you for a degree, but it's preparing you for a career. So once you graduate, you'll be, you already have um, a lot of connections. Um, so I think that's, that's great, especially for a larger university as well. It's like you do find that you have uh, smaller, more manageable classes. <clears throat> I've had wonderful professors um, who, who challenge your ideas, not just to challenge you to try and tell you that you're wrong, but they're trying to challenge you to make you better. Um, so that was, I think, the primary difference that I, I found, and something that um, has kept me here, kept me motivated. Well, I like to prepare. Um, I'm beginning my sophomore year this fall, and I'm already going out on co-op. So the process can be really quick for you if you want to involve yourself in that type of speed pattern. Um, one thing I can say, the interview process that I went through um, to select my co-op uh, employer has now convinced me to tweak my major from just wanting to be social media, I actually want to be a social media analyst. And I didn't find that out until after I started going around and interviewing with several other advertisement agencies and social media agencies and found out what they did, that it tweaked my interest to better, to, to, to switch my major into something even a little bit more um, defined. So that, that's something that, that you'll get here that most colleges won't afford you an opportunity to have. How many of you guys, uh your primary experience is a military school, A school, C school, some sort of tech school for that. All right, for the, the few of you <laughs> whose hands are raised, um, the difference here is they care, right? Like there's no bureaucracy. You go, you get front of the line privilege. They know the answer right away. They want you to succeed. They're not ticking away the EAOS, you know, just waiting for their last day. So if you have questions, you'll get answers, you'll get them quick trust this system to 
not just forget about you or shuffle you up if you're difficult. So aside from the, the 10 week quarters, we've, we've got that and to be prepared for that, what else do you wish you would have known before starting your first term here at Drexel? Um, for me, since, um, I wish I had known what I just said, that you could trust the system like right away. I would have had a lot more questions answered a lot more easily and had a better first term. Um, the Math Resource Center, fantastic. A lot of you guys are probably in Math uh, 105, is it? The, the six credit monster course. <laughs> um, go early and often. Uh, another thing I learned the hard way is uh, class. You have to schedule it online in advance. You can't just walk in and make them. It's uh, you know, a lot of, you know, have to see a problem ahead of time and plan for it. Um, also, the Writing Center, or Comma Command, as I like to call it, um, mm -hmm. they are super useful. And again, you have to plan that in advance. You can't just have your paper due tomorrow and kick in the door and say, comma me. You, you have to set it up and be prepared to take criticism uh, and block out an hour for it. A uh, few other things I wished I would known about was the Drexel Veterans Association and Dragon Link. Um, I'm an officer now, but I hadn't actually joined the group until the day before the election because I didn't know what Dragon Link did. It's uh, how you find your clubs and your resources and how they find you, right? They can't reach out to you uh, without being, without you already joining them, right? It's, it's a privacy thing. I can't just demand every veteran's email. You guys have to come to us for that. So get on Dragon Link, find the Drexel Veterans Association. We have uh, basically front of the line privilege for a lot of career and mental health resources, and without those, you're uh, you're cheating yourself. You know, just get in there, follow the Facebook page, join the group, and you'll get the spam emails that occasionally are going to have gems that are going to be valuable to you for the four or five years that you're here and maybe beyond. One of the, it's a couple of things I wish I had known. And I'm going to keep saying my name so that when we're done, you can walk up to me and say, hey, loving you, versus like, I'm sorry, what's your name? My name is Love and You, just like it's spelled. <laughs> but anyway, the, some of the things that I wish I had known was uh, Dragon Link was one of them because it also, it opens up a world of possibilities to some of the different clubs outside of just the veterans clubs. I had an opportunity to do a lot of volunteering. I went to the Phillies games and did recycling. Um, with clubs, I've joined the Divine Nine, uh, Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. Um, I'm also a part of different organizations that do a lot of outreach. So learning how to navigate through those options and making your time here fun and useful and something to build your resume. Because a lot of companies now want to see your community service and your, your outreach and different things. And also minors. Speak to your advisors. Do not take a bunch of empty electives because they tell you that you need these electives. Add it and make it a minor. Hone in on those electives and use them to your benefit so that when you get your degree, you have a minor with that and you can build and grow from that. And another thing about Dragon Link is that if you're just interested to find out what other groups are on campus, you can keyword search. So it doesn't have to be super specific. Um, so our next question, why should I apply for grants and scholarships if I'm receiving the post 9-11 GI Bill? So you can have some money. <laughs> <laughs> I'll say like this, it's free money. Like she just said, it's free money. And then here's why I always say about free. Free is cheaper than cheap. Yeah. That's right, it sounds weird, but that's how I word that. So, and don't look at it and don't feel like, well, I didn't earn that, I don't need that. Listen, get it, stop playing that game of sympathy, woe is me, get over yourself. Get up what you're doing. You're feeling sorry for yourself. So get over yourself, apply. And then the one thing you should talk to is your financial advisor, Brian and Tiffany. They can tell you that the last I heard about that Monco is as a FIA grant, we're supposed to, no matter what you get paid, you get the max FIA grant. I could be wrong. It could have changed. But when I was at Monco, that's what I was told from our financial advisor. As long as you're a veteran, you get the max FIA grant. It's free money. Hence the word grant, free. So thank you. And Tiffany is nodding other, her head. Yes, yes. Okay, so so one other thing about the scholarships. <laughs> One other thing about the scholarships is make sure that they're cost of attendance, right? 
because if it's they'll, they'll say what it's for, and if it's not cost of attendance, you're not going to get the money, right? So don't waste your time writing 500 essays for things that are going to go towards tuition only, because all you're doing is saving the VA some money, and uh, you earned every penny of that. Why waste your time giving them money back when you could be wasting your time giving yourself that money? Um, yeah, it, make sure it's cost of attendance and uh, fat stacks of cash. You can't beat that. And I'd just like to say um, the grant money in my first freshman year helped me out a lot. Um, I took some of the grant money and used it for my meal plan. And I'm a transfer student, so I don't live on campus. So I use it for meal plan. I used it to help me with my parking. So it, there were some benefits that made it a lot easier for me in that first year. And um, so if it's available for you, you have it to use. And because the, the meal plan is pretty expensive. But if you're a transfer student like me, I never had to worry about where I was going to eat when I was on campus. I had somewhere to go. I didn't worry about having to have money in my pocket. I knew I was going to be able to eat. And I just took it right out of the grant money. So it really didn't come out of my pocket. So. So how about, um, how was it adapting to classes with a younger generation, and what was your biggest challenge? I like to speak on that. <laughs> that it was a big challenge for me. Um, I'm a little bit older, so being in a class with a lot of young um, students, um, I was afraid to communicate with them. And I later found, on, found out in my second quarter, because I kind of went through the whole first quarter on my own, not really knowing what to do, not what to say, you know. And then and I got in my second quarter, we started doing group projects. And, I, and in the group projects, I found out they're just as afraid of us as we are them. And, but believe it or not, once you get to know them, they, it, they lean on you a lot. And, and once you make that communication, and I found the quickest way to get communication is if you have an Instagram. Every little younger kids have Instagrams. So if you just ask them, hey, you got an Instagram? That's normally the break, icebreaker right off the gate. And they're like, oh, yeah, I got an Instagram, Instagram. And then it'll allow you the way to work in with them. And then I found out that during this time period, because you have so much experience, they lean on your, your, your experience level and your life skills to help them along. So it be, it's a give and take. They help you understand the younger community and in exchange they, they understand some of the life things that you've gone through and experiences, so it works out really good. And once you make that gap, you find that they're, they're, I have friends now that are just cool, been cool the whole year with me, and they're, um, they're cool. So. Awesome. <laughs> I was going to say, uh, intimidation for the professors, because you're thinking you're in a big classroom of me. Sometimes some classes are 300 students long, because a lot of students for that one class, everybody has to take it. Um, but then I also realized, you know, I'm used to the military. Dumbest questions, the one you don't ask. Well, they got 300 students. They don't have time to answer 300 questions. They have to go on and move on with their lectures. What I've learned is you can still reach out to the professor because he's keep telling you, reach out to me. Don't just sit there and not reach out still. Even though they have a big class, they'll still reply. But they'll even tell you ahead of time. If you read the syllabus, I might not reply right away. It might take me a day or two. But if it's really urgent, keep writing me so I know it's urgent. So that's my challenge. And plus, one more thing was sidebar conversations. I can't stand it. I get... When it's a big classroom, especially, and you're trying to learn, like for the professor, and you have the kid just like, hey, what's this? And they're talking about what they just talked about. It's kind of like a, you smile, but I don't believe in yelling at them. I go, well, I'm not going to embarrass myself. So I, I sometimes have to wish my hand. So that'd be my advice to you. If you have a sidebar conversation that's annoying you, talk to them. Whisper to them, please. That's a little tactical. We're not in the military anymore. You don't have to yell at them and say, hey, and he's annoyed. And move on. You just got to say, hey, man. Okay? And that's all. In the nursing program, it is a lot of 18-year-olds and 19-year-olds, and I'm 46, and when I tell them that, they're like, <gasps> and I'm like, listen, you have to go over that again. I know you just got out of high school, but I did not. You were probably not even born when I got out of high school, so therefore, we have to review that. Don't be afraid to be in the class and ask for the professor to review that. Like he said, the professors are very accommodating. So you have to speak up for yourself as an adult learner. And then, like I said earlier, get in groups with these young people because their knowledge rubs off on you. I always say experience and maturity doesn't come with age. It comes with learning and getting to know things. We are never too old to learn. So we take the time to get to know them. And he said IG, but I will tell you, Snapchat is your friend when you get into these classrooms. Get Snapchat. <laughs> so one of the things
things that I, that I <coughs> sort of picked up on was um, the military has tested us in ways that like we, we make up 1% of the population. So that means 99% of the population either physically can't do what we do or made a conscious decision not to. So we've been tested in ways that no one else will ever understand. Uh, so if our biggest challenge is sitting next to an 18-year-old, uh, sometimes we say uh, they're probably in the Coast Guard. Uh, but <laughs> um, the military has set us up for success, not just for uh, our futures, but for environments that we're not necessarily comfortable with. Um, and I think um, my biggest challenge was going from a medium to a large, but <laughs> like my shirt size. But um, there is a small adjustment period going from military life to civilian life and civilian life into student life, but it's something that will all transition. And I think uh, what helped me the most in that transition was uh, finding other veterans who I could communicate with, talk to, um, and I think we're going to ask this question in a little bit, but uh, the Veterans Lounge was, was the one resource that I found the most beneficial because it helped me connect with other veterans. Um, so rather than being surrounded by a bunch of people who don't understand my struggles, uh, you're surrounded by people, like a network of people who are familiar with where you've been and are willing to help. Um, so with the Veterans Lounge, I'd like for you to talk more about that if you'd like to, but what are some other places where you like to go and, and study without any distractions? The library is fantastic for that. They have a quiet room. It's quiet, and it is a, a great space. It's actually comfortable. Um, other good places to study, really everybody has their own thing. I like a little bit of background noise most of the time, so I'm usually confident that anywhere that I can put my laptop where I'm not straining my back is a good place to do it. Um, another thing I'll say about finding places, uh, some of you guys have more than just Drexel going on, so it might be cool to scout out a place to sleep. Pretty much any flat surface is <laughs> fair game here. You know, like an hour power nap is a great thing to do, and it seems weird. You're not used to sleeping on a bench or a couch in public. But get yourself a neck pillow, and uh, you'll watch your GPA go up like 20%. I'd say that the Veterans Lounge was, was probably the, uh, the greatest place for me because it was a place where I could go to uh, connect with other veterans. Uh, sometimes people my own age, sometimes people different. But uh, you'll find that it's a very diverse group of people, so it's not dominated by one branch. It's not uh, just Marines, not just Navy, uh, but it, it, it's a very diverse group. And... Uh, we have free printing. I think that was what drew me first. Um, but it's also just, it's, it's our space. It's your space. Um, it's somewhere where you can go take off your shoes and just relax. And we do have that space manned with, with students for VA work study. So, um, so moving into that, um, what is the thorough work study job? How do I apply? Where will I work? Bam, I can answer that. Because <laughs> I'm a VA work study. And let me tell you, it's not an easy job. I'm gonna say it's not easy. It's not challenging either. It's you're gonna do work. You're not necessarily gonna get paid to do nothing. But I always tell the VA work study because I've been here long with Brian and I've always talked about this. But we wanted to get more VA work study. Because when I was going to the SBA conferences, I seen guys say, "We have like 30 work study." I'm like what the what? And I'm told we had a cabin. Brian said, "Well, we have many as long as they're busy." So if you want to be a VA work study, you have to be able to work. For example, I know Rebecca has work studies now. We worked out something with that. I know it was a great idea for that. As long as we can find somewhere for you to go, go for it. And how do you do it? You just come to see Bryant. He'll put your name in, give you the form, throw it out right there on the spot, hand it back to him, and he'll send it in. The only thing is we have to find somewhere for you to be. And I work at the Central, uh, Drexel Central. Yeah, I forgot what I work at. I, right now I'm on co-op, and Friday, tomorrow's my last day. But I do, when I come back Monday, I'll be doing it. And one thing you have to know is, if you don't know the answer for a student who needs assistance or something, ask Bryant. Don't say, oh, I don't know, man. That's not my category. Go to Bryant and go to Tiffany. Go to Tiffany, and then go to Tiffany. And then talk to them. Or if you have questions about classes, come to me or whoever else is at work today. We'll, we'll help you out. That's our goal. Because I've noticed, even when I'm at Drexel Central, I don't just help the veteran students out. I go up to the regular students, like a plain old, plain Jane student, what do you call a traditional student. And I help them. I always ask them questions about, hey, what are you here for? Sometimes they check in just to look for directions. And they're waiting in a long line for over an hour just for directions. So I ask them, are you here for directions? Are you here to withdraw or drop? Come see me right now. I'll take care of it. Or I ask them, what are, you, what, are you, what are you here for? Are you here for financial aid? And if they're not here for financial aid, I guide them. All right, let me show you where to go. 
And that's what we do at work studies is you have to take that extra step. By the way, it's seven twenty-five an hour because that's the minimum wage in Pennsylvania. It's tax-free. That's the best part about it. And I believe they changed it where you used to get paid every 50 hours, but I think you could submit it every so often and get paid earlier. Is that correct? Yeah. And so, okay, so it's still 50 hours. So once you get your 50 hour in, or if you even go over, you give it to Brian, he submits it, and the VA pays you within, you know, a month or two. No, I'm kidding. But one week or two, depends on how the system's working. But please, if you want to do it. My name's Chris, by the way. Again, I'll say, like, loving you said, I want to keep saying it's Chris. So if you got questions afterwards, don't call I have a question about everyone's favorite topic in the city, parking. So if I'm bringing my car here, where can I park? And if I'm a, a veteran that has um, any, you know, a type of disability um, or received disability, can I get assistance with parking? I, I park in the parking lot, um, um, and I've been parking in the parking lot. It's pretty expensive. Um, all I can say, if you don't have parking now, you're probably not going to get parking. Because um, when I was in the parking facility yesterday, they're pretty much all sold out. Um, unless you are disabled. If you're disabled, they do have dis disability spots still available throughout the, the area. Um, it normally runs about $516 every 10 weeks. It's pretty expensive. Um, like I said, if you so if you are getting that, getting that extra money from your... Um, grant or something like that, that's a big buffer. Um, I do know that if you are on voc rehab, um, a lot of times you can get your voc rehab counselor to pay for your parking. You just have to request it. Um, I didn't know that until later on. I found out later, but all sometimes all you have to do is just ask. And another vet, like I said, the teamwork between the vets are really important because another vet shared that with me, and all I needed to do was just ask my counselor would they pay for it, and then they paid for it. So. That, so the vets, the vet groups is really important. We share a lot of information amongst each other to help everybody out. So um, that's important. So I drive to school every day too. And if you go, if you guys know where like Drexel Pizza is or like the volleyball course outside, there's like some free parking there. I mean, good luck trying to find a spot, but it's there. If you drive a motor, I drive a motorcycle. I just squeeze that thing anywhere. So I usually get free parking there, but there's, if you go down by like 43rd Street, if you don't mind walking 10, 15 minutes, there's a lot of like free parking over there, and it's normally pretty open. I used to live over there, and there's always parking over there. So if you don't mind walking a couple blocks and make it, then I would just park over there. But also, I wouldn't pay the $15 for like a parking garage if you have one class. So you normally can find a spot and just pay an hour or two for like six bucks, seven bucks, whatever it is, and then just leave class and go home or do whatever you want because the parking garage is $15 no matter what. It doesn't matter how much time you spend there. So it's just some options. I, I will give you my opinion on what I feel about free parking. For one, it's really expensive. I, I do this all the time. When I, I took some Sub 90s kids and our professor got mad at me because I told him where to go with cheap parking. I park at JFK Parking. They're up against the 150 a month now, but it's still cheaper if you're here all day. But here's what I say. It's, if you tell them I'm a dress student, it's four hundred dollars for anybody else, but it's one fifty for you. It was one twenty five, but October first it goes up to one fifty. I highly recommend you go to them. I'm gonna tell you one thing now: they're slowly uh, shortening the parking lot because they're buying it out. Someone else is buying it out. But guess what? They're not doing. They're not getting bids like they used to. Because I went there, parking the world, you could barely find a spot. But it was I had to pay one fifty for it, one point five. They take out three months up front, just a heads up too. So make sure you have some kind of money in your account. But you can go in and out as you please. You can use it overnight. And if you don't, it's twenty eight dollars a night. And I think they were saying after so many hours, it's just like twenty eight dollars. Or if you're only here for maybe one or two classes, get here early in the morning. And I'm gonna tell you right now, suck it up, Buttercup. Get here early in the morning, right along uh, one of the uh, like you just saw the volleyball courts. It's one twenty five an hour. So if you have a class from eight to ten, pay the one twenty, pay the two fifty for that one, the two hour time frame, or maybe a little bit more. But it's one twenty five an hour. You can park on street parking.
If you're in Center City, if you have any classes in Center City, there is no parking. And the garage there is $22 a day. Yes, and no, don't do that. Um, but you can park here and take the shuttle. The shuttle is amazing. It's on time. It runs all day. It is not a city bus. I advocate for the shuttle. I take classes earlier in the morning, so I'm like him. I get up earlier, and I find a parking spot, and I pay like the 250 or whatever. But um, do not try to park in Center City and think you're going to make it. The only other option, if you're in Center City, over by CCP, if you're an alum, alum of CCP, you can park in their garage for six dollars. You'll be there all day, and you just walk a couple of blocks to um, the new college building, and there's parking along there as well, and it's much cheaper. But advocate with your counselor through your uh, programs to be reimbursed for your parking if you have to utilize the parking garage, and it is, in my case, it's based on your disabilities. The shuttle pickup is like 33rd Street, 33rd and Market. And pay attention to the shuttles because if you get on the wrong shuttle, you're just riding until you get back to the destination. They're going to drop you back off. They're not going to bring you here. <laughs> they will take you all over and drop you right back off and you have to start all over again. So pay attention to the shuttles. Another thing, like I was saying, there's free parking down at 43rd Street. And right across the street at like 43rd and Market is Drexel's Athletic Complex. And there is a shuttle bus that goes straight from there to main campus here, so that's an option. I forgot the shuttle bus. Uh, one last thing on parking. If you're going to be driving in the city, get the Meter Up app on your phone now. It's a lifesaver. It lets you feed the meter. The PPA is ruthless and evil, and they will ticket you, boot you, and tow you for fun. Like, they're just bad people. You should get the Meter Up app and be afraid of them. One thing, uh, one plus, like you're talking about the meters, and I always tell people this because a lot of people don't know, if you have handicap plates because of your disability, you have an hour after the meter expires to get to your car because they allow that time accommodations for uh, disabilities. So if you have uh, disabled plates or if you have a certain percentage and you have not received your disabled plates, Please uh, look into that with your doctor and your counselor in reference to ensuring that you get that, that you have an hour after the meter expires to get to your car. Thank you. All right. Do we have any questions in the in the audience? In case you haven't noticed, parking is terrible. <laughs> Go ahead and in the center there. It, it did open back up uh, yesterday in the armory. So it was increased. Is that what you're asking? Because it was temporarily increased. What's that? We're back Okay. Sorry, what's that? Yep, all the furniture is back in there, and right now that's where that's where we're going to be housing the vet lounge. Yeah, Rebecca will address all the questions. There are some 12-hour parking spots as well, like right off of uh, Chestnut Street. Yes, I, I, I find it all and free. But it's some 12-hour parking over, like right off of Chestnut, um, right off of Walnut, right behind the uh, bookstore. So look for those as well. Anything else from the audience? Yes, it's so. Oh, sorry, no, 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 I'll take it. So they're all obviously CPA, government business. It's, so we, we all know how it works. Um, one thing to do though is be patient. I'm going to tell you right now. Coming into the Drexel Central, hollering everybody, going, "I didn't get my money." Blah 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 blah. blah, 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 blah. Don't do that. I'm going to tell you right now, here's what Brian's going to do. I'm going to tell you exactly what Brian's going to do. He's going to sit there and listen to you until you're blue in the face, yelling, thinking that if I yell at this man, he'll give me what I want. He's going to look you right back in your face, a calm, clean face. Okay, man, that's great. I'm glad you feel, you feel better. And once you get more angry, he'll let you do it again. And then at the end, when you finally say, I feel better, 
Okay, now you're not. Okay, yay. Yeah. And then that's it. Uh, the answer is yes. You can take some time. But you need to make sure you let them know, I am registering for this thing right. Don't be one of those kids that go, I'm a veteran. I'm going to drop a little part time out of college. And all of a sudden get a bill in the mail wondering, well, why doesn't I put it in the mail? I really love your school. You've done something wrong. You know what you did. You know what you did. Instead of going, um, I see it. Well, I'm going to be wrong. Did it be a birthday? I see it all. I hear it all. I hear it all. I hear it all. Some letters on that, some of them really do. Don't be rude. Try to be patient. I can find out the other things. But sometimes Brian's taking two pictures. I, will, I, know, I know what's going on. So all you got to do is tell me. I didn't take any pictures. I'll say, hold on one minute. If I already preached this before, you say, anyone come in for this picture? The VA is satisfied. They'll get it taken care of. They'll be in case. And we all got a gun officer. We'll get the paperwork. Now I'm going to get two weeks. Or we'll put on a joint task force or whatever. So yes, there are problems with those. Trust me. He mentioned that park is a building he has. My counselor sucks, I'm gonna be honest. But I try to be rude. It's, you gotta be fighting the fight. That's what I'm trying to do. Don't quit. Just keep and I'm not done fighting, so it's all about going ahead. I'm both rehab and I haven't had an issue at all and I started last year. But also ensure that you submit your grades on time. You have to submit your final grades because if you don't submit your grades and your registration, they will not pay you. And also, follow up on your 1905s. Call the bookstore and check to see if they are there uh, in enough time so that you can get all the supplies that you need. And be conscious of the fact that they have lowered the cost for different items like supplies and things like that. So talk to your counselor and make sure you submit your information. One, one also quick thing I want to say. Um, my, my first year here, um, I didn't have a very good experience with my bulk rehab counselor. And I didn't know what to do. And I went to Bryant. I think I went to uh, maybe some um, Rebecca. And I talked to a couple people. And they said, listen, all you have to do is just contact them and then let them know that your voc rehab is not providing the services for you. I wrote the director. And within like 20 minutes after emailing the director, he called me personally and said, what's the problem? I said, I'm writing my voc rehab counselor. He's not responding to me. Uh, it's 60 days. I'm waiting for a response. He doesn't call me back, what the case may be. He took care of all of my issues within an hour and then reassigned me to someone else. And I've had a fun my time with a new counselor has been fantastic. Like, it's the best thing ever. So I was afraid that if I made any waves, that it was going to ref reflect back on me. And I was scared to ask for help. And once I got that help and they told me what to do and I took care of it, everything worked out. So don't, don't be afraid. If your counselor's not doing what he's supposed to be doing, don't, don't be afraid to find out who you who you need to contact to ask for a new counselor because it's your right to have a counselor that's going to provide you the services that you need. They don't want you to be stressed in school. They don't want you to be stressed in school. They don't want you to be sick in school. They want you to come here and do your best. So the best thing to do is the counselor can do is make sure your experience works, works out the best for you as well. So if you have... Yes. Sure, one more question. Sure. really important to know that like when you
when you're not in school, you're not going to get paid. So, like, when Thanksgiving break comes and you're not in school for that week, week and a half, you're not going to get paid for that week, week and a half. Well, I'm trying. It's a break. It's a break. Yeah. Your week break is being termed. That is a dedicated no, job. No, you're kidding. <laughs> All right. All right. So, let's just give a round of applause maybe for our, our panel. Thank you so much yeah. for being here. So, the way... Just going to remind you, many of you, maybe even most of you, are going to have some problem. And they have back channels that are not available to you. They have relationships that aren't available to you. And they have a more holistic view of the whole process. They can hit that one button or they can make the one phone call. Um, but they'll get it fixed faster than you can. And you being angry just makes their life worse and they're here to help you. So. You are all so awesome. I'm so glad you're at Drexel. So Andrew, at the very end, if you're interested in, be, in helping us build out a Veterans Helping Veterans Ambassador Program, Andrew um, is someone to talk to. He's our chief architect on that program. And we're going to write it up and see if the VA will fund it through the VA work study. I wanted to also address the issue about the Veterans Lounge. Our armory will be under construction in the winter slash spring. I'm not exactly sure. Um, for the last year, I have been looking for a new location for the Veterans Lounge, which opened um, on 11-11-11. How about that? So um, we're ready to move on. It's been a great space. I think you're going to enjoy it for the remaining months. Um, but I have um, every bit of confidence that the next iteration will be as comfortable and as welcoming and probably never better. So stay tuned. Um, as you can see, we have the day is still going, and I hope all of you will stick around. When we leave, stop by and pick up a t-shirt um, for Welcome Week. They're in the back of the room. And then outside, we have the best of the red, white, and blue, and gold barbecue, and hopefully some good country music, and some yummy food, and continue to talk to each other, build this community, talk to our, our mentors here, and there are a lot of other student veterans who are joining us and, and community members. Um, so just ask folks, why are you here? And find out what, um, you know, what you have in common. Learn some new things. Then um, we have a campus tour that's gonna leave here at one o'clock and that will be hosted by our student veterans, our current student veterans. So you're gonna walk through campus through the eyes of a student veteran. We'll stop at the Veterans Lounge, um, and then you'll come back here, and uh, probably between 2.30 and 2.45, um, we're just gonna be hanging out and getting ready to get on a bus and take that down to Pannoni Associates. Um, compliments of Chuck Pannoni, one of our alumni, who is the founder and chairman of Pannoni Associates. And he has a remarkable uh, career history. He's an alumnus. He is a uh, twice uh, former president of our university, a trustee. And I'm just excited on your first like day to give you this insider look at Pannoni Associates and an alumni owned and military friendly employer. So even if you don't want to work there, it's just going to be a lot of fun. And I have Jessica Viscuso and Marvin Johnson um, from Pannoni who are hosting you. You'll hear a few words from David uh, Deliza. He's Pannoni's chief operating officer. Um, he graduated from Drexel, uh, civil engineering, and then Peter Coote is going to say a few words. He's Pannoni's chief legal officer. Um, he's been with the company for 21 years. He graduated from the United States Military Academy at West Point with civil engineering, University of Illinois with his law degree, seven years as a captain in the Army, Corps of Engineers. Um, he has... Uh, He's the proud dad of a daughter who's also a captain, and he is currently serving in the UN Armistice Command in South Korea. So you'll get to hear from him as well. So make sure that you stick around for all of these great things. Pannoni will, you know, 
provide a lovely reception for us. And then I think there's a mixer somewhere in Center City. Um, in terms of coming back to campus, we're going to let that up to you. If you have any questions about how to do that, you can certainly touch base with one of us. Um, so any quick questions before we leave, before we adjourn? Okay. I hope that this has been just right. Um, there, there are, there's lots of time now for you to talk to us individually, and I hope that you will enjoy lunch, and, uh, and then we'll call you all together when the tours are ready. Okay? Go Dragons. Thank you. Thank you.